Hey, so I want to talk to you before we plant these tomatoes about the two varieties of tomatoes. They are indeterminate and determinate. I'm not even sure if that is called a variety. Um, to me, a variety is like cherry tomato or black cream or beef steak. Um, I, I don't know what, what the... what that is called if it's called a variety or not maybe it is um but the there are good things to know if you're a new gardener or even if you're not um indeterminate the 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 root word the root word root is i'm trying to look at myself but i need to look at the camera so i'm i'm new and figuring these things out the word root the word root is determined determined determinant so indeterminate means undetermined or not determined um i don't know if this is grammatically correct so don't quote me and if it's not you don't need to tell me um <laughs> for reals but, um basically that's what it means and so what that means is that an indeterminate tomato will grow to an undetermined height and produce an a, a not determined amount of fruit tomatoes are a fruit so none so nothing about this tomato is predetermined the height of the tomato the amount of food it produces none of that is predetermined so it's an indeterminate tomato it's all the possibilities are endless that doesn't mean if you only have a small raised bed or a small garden or a, a five gallon grow bag or a small pot that this tomato is going to go crazy and take over your life that's not what it means what it means is as long as you provide the conditions for it to be successful and grow. It will continue to grow until, if you live in a place like me, where I live in Colorado, the snow comes and kills it. If you live in other places and um, until the season ends, it will continue to grow as long as you take care of it, fertilize it, keep it disease-free, um, harvest it, it will continue to produce for you. It, it will, if you have a smaller pot or a smaller growing space, it will continue to produce food. It won't continue to grow in physical size. It will, it will adjust to the space that it has. It's not like humans, how we, we can get bigger than our, our bodies allow and buy bigger clothes and expand. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way when it come it stays within its limits so if it has a five gallon grow bag it will grow in there it just won't get as big as if it has a raised bed or an in-ground garden that's staked and can get up to six feet tall so those are the differences the other thing is called determinate which means determined which means predetermined which means already decided which means that this tomato will grow to a set amount, a set height. So it's gonna grow to a predetermined height and it's gonna pre it produce a predetermined amount of food. Um, I don't believe that information, those details are available to you at the time of purchase. I don't believe it says this will, I mean, it could say three feet tall or something like that, but I don't believe that it says um, this will give you five pounds of tomatoes or 50 tomatoes. I don't, I don't think it gets that detailed. If it does, it does. If it doesn't, I'm right. <laughs> but it means that <clears throat> whoever, cre whoever created the seed or whoever, um, wherever that came from and however it came to be that it's all that information is already pre disposition within that and so if you have a balcony and you have a or a smaller growing space you you might want to use a determinate variety just because it does it it's more more controlled apart from the controlling that you do that doesn't mean you have to go out on a hunt 
and look for a determinant variety because determinant varieties are kind of rare. They're, there's, they're out there, you can find them. Um, but there's more indeterminate varieties than determinant varieties. And um, some people like them just because they don't have to fuss with them. They plant them, they do their thing, and then they're done. And um, most of the time they're done before the summer's done. So if maybe you don't want tomatoes all summer long, which I don't know who those people are, but, and so they, that's, that's what they like and that's what they do. Um, so, but it's an, it's an option. It's something to know. It's so if you get the wrong kind of plant and you were hoping for tomatoes all summer long and your, your plant stopped and you don't know why, that could be a reason. Um, what else? The other thing is, um, I think that's all. Make sure you buy a tomato that you like. If if you if you like tomatoes in general, make sure you buy a, a variety of a tomato that you enjoy a lot. Tomatoes produce a lot. They're not stingy or greedy. Once they get going, they'll give you all they got. If you don't love cherry tomatoes with your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and if you don't love snacking on cherry tomatoes like popcorn, then you probably shouldn't get cherry tomatoes because you're gonna have cherry tomatoes forever. It takes a lot of cherry tomatoes to make a marinara sauce. It's possible. It takes a lot of cherry tomatoes to do, put in a sandwich. Um, but you, do you see what I'm saying? If you don't, if you're, if you're not, I mean, some people are obsessed and they can't have enough of them, which is great. But if you're if you're not that person, you might want to think of a different kind of tomato. They there's a tomato for everyone. There's a a meatier, less juicy, dro like drippy kind, like the San Marzano or the Roma. They're more savory, meatier. Um, you can make sauces with those. You could use them in sandwiches. You can cut them up in in salads or tacos or salsas. Um, they're they're more versatile and the things that you can do to use them with and um and then there's there's larger tomatoes like dr witchy's yellow tomato or the black cream or um lemon boy or white tomasol that are like considered slicer tomatoes that you would just one slice is enough and you can put it on a whole sandwich or maybe you just want a tomato sandwich, which is something new that I'm gonna try this year. Um, that I hear that's amazing. Um, what else? I mean, it just make sure that you're growing the one that's right for you. Some are sweet, some are savory, some are juicy, some are meaty. Um, not all tomatoes are created equal, but all tomatoes are amazing. And once you grow a, an amazing tomato, you won't you won't be into grocery store tomatoes. You definitely won't be into restaurant tomatoes unless they're in season and they're buying local produce. You'll definitely become a tomato snob, um, which is not a bad thing. We need more people to care about where their food comes from because it impacts more than it impacts so many things. That's a whole different conversation, but it's definitely an important one to have and let's get planting okay what's up guys i'm here in one of the many gardens that i have and it's one of the newest gardens literally it's brand new recently built um i'm one of the lucky first gardeners ever to be able to grow in this beautiful space it's sunny the sun is just about to go down but i thought I still have enough sunlight to do a quick video on how to plant tomatoes. So it's an easy, fun, and exciting video. Um, it's a popular video. Everyone knows how to plant tomatoes, but I decided to share my tips and my tricks of how I do it. And I'm just letting you see behind me of how new it is and how gorgeous it is. And so we're about to get started. So here is my plot. And unfortunately, with this new system I'm using, I'm not able to flip the camera. So I'm not going to do that. 
Um, and in my other videos, I told you that I'm doing, um, that I'm new to doing these videos and, and getting comfortable with people seeing me. And there's people passing by, <laughs> so I'm stepping away um, just because I'm nervous. But I'm getting used to that. And so I'm going to be planting tomatoes. I'm going to do five different varieties in this raised bed here. I'm doing it along a trellis. And I'll show you what that looks like at the end. But I want to use the light I have to take advantage of, of the opportunity. So let me make sure that I get this going. Awesome. So I'm trying to get this situated so you could see. And I'm trying to make the mic so that you can hear. Um, and get everything ready. So in this raised bed here, I'm going to be planting at the end of this raised bed at the end the app toward this trellis, such as right here, uh, indeterminate variety. So I'm going to dig the hole and I've already amended the bed with amazing rich compost and some natural organic um, plant matter. So it's a, it's amazing. The soil is amazing. I don't even, it's, it's so nice and fluffy and aerated. I don't even need any um, tools. I could just use my hand and, and move things to the side. And then I'm going to, The variety I'm planting is called Lemon Boy. And so with this, the, the variety, what you wanna do is, um, this one is ready to be planted for sure. I'm loosening the soil and all of this doesn't really matter because we're gonna bury this tomato deep. Um, we just want, we don't want these roots to be root bound. So how they're circling like this, it's not, it's, it's, it's just in time. Once they start making circles and they get too tight, they're not going to expand out and grow, which isn't going to make a hardy plant, but this is just in time. Um, we also, these baby leaves right here, these are the leaves when the plant first comes from the seed. The first leaves you see, they look like this. And then the next leaves look like these, like the regular tomato leaves. So you wanna pinch these off. Just with your thumb, pinch them off. The reason you wanna do that is because you don't want to leave them on there because we're actually gonna bury them deep in the soil. And then we're gonna bury it deep. So we're gonna pinch all of these leaves off to where we're going to bury the plant. We don't want these to get fungus or moldy buried under there because they're still alive. And so that's why we're pinching them off. If you look closely, there's a lot of fuzzy, um, fuzzy lines along the stem of this tomato. <laughs> um, so all of these white fuzzy lines you see everywhere on the green stem those are all roots waiting to happen so if you buried the tomato like this on its side the, it would take root some people do that i don't there's actually almost no wrong way to plant a tomato except not to plant it at all um my preferred method is the method i'm showing you so i'm removing these these baby leaves and these these younger leaves that are closer to here and I'm gonna put everything from my fingers down into the soil and bury that deep so these roots will continue to grow and spread out all of these these roots here will start to develop and also grow and spread out a stronger thicker more advanced root system means a stronger plant which means more production and a, and a healthier a healthier plant and so that's a that's the reason why we're doing this this is how I always plant my tomatoes 
I always have so many tomatoes, more than I know what to do with. My plants never, knock on wood, <laughs> never get diseases. Um, I'll show you how to prune them as, as the season goes. But they, I keep them from getting diseases. Um, I, I, I maintain them and so they stay very aerated and they just keep growing and growing and growing. So after I have my tomato ready to be in the hole, I'm just gonna measure it, make sure that it has enough, that's where I, can, where I want it. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is to put some earthworm castings in the hole. So let me grab that. I'm just using some organic earthworm castings. You can buy them um, from local businesses, local greenhouses, um, places where they produce them locally. I bought this bag from Costco. Um, and I'm just taking a handful and sprinkle it in, in the hole. It's that simple. And I am gonna get some of this material from the top, which is basically the soil that I pulled out, and just add it because I want it a little bit higher. When I measured it, it was just, it's about right there. The next thing I'm gonna do before I put my plant, which is non, non-traditional or non-conventional, but it's my secret that I learned as I, in the garden, you it's a constant experimenting and learning and growing. Everyone has their way of doing things, but none of those ways is the way. Um, there are many people who do many things the same and many people who do many things different, but they all have different outcomes. Sometimes they have similar outcomes. Um, there's no wrong way. The only way, the, the worst thing you could do is not try it. So new gardeners, you don't need to be perfect. You don't need to, this is, this the same thing can be done in a pot. So just, you know, make sure you have good soil, new soil. If you can't find organic soil, at least use new soil. At least make sure your pot is a new pot. Or at least make sure you're disinfecting and sterilizing your pot before you're reusing it. And for a tomato, I would make sure that it's a, a large enough pot. Um, because the, the more space the tomato has to grow in a, in a pot, the, the bigger it's gonna grow and the better it's gonna do. It will do good in a 20 inch pot, but it will do amazing in a five gallon grow bag. Um, so, but you, you have to use, you have to do your best with what you have. I live in an apartment with no balcony. And so I'm, I'm, this is the best that I have is a, thankfully, a community garden. And so what I'm gonna do, there, there was a little breeze and my camera fell in the hole. So let me readjust. So what I'm gonna do is put this egg in this hole. And I'm actually just gonna break it because um, I wanna make sure that it's open. And um, I'm not gonna do much else with it after that. I just wanna make sure that, that, that if it were a fresh egg, that it wouldn't have the ability to hatch. And then you could, you could use your shovel, you could break it up more. There's no need to do more than that. The reason that I'm using the egg is because a lot of times, sometimes tomatoes will get blossom and rot. And what that means is that your tomato will, um, at the bottom of the tomato, it gets like a black spot that looks rotten. Um, and rot. And the reason for that is because um, a lot of times it's a calcium deficiency. So as this baby tomato grows up, this eggshell will actually break down the nutrients in the, in the egg and the shell will break down and feed the feed the tomato all there's so much life in that egg it can produce a life as you know and so it will feed this plant 
and, and make it thrive. So we have the earthworm castings, amazing soil with plant matter and compost, and then the egg. And it's very nice and fluffy. Took care of this plant and we're burying it at the level that I told you. And The only thing I'm gonna do is just because I, I, I do want it next to my trellis. I'm just gonna move it over just a little bit. It's still, it's not changing anything. I just wanna recenter the center. And I want the, I want it to be, again, closer to my trellis than where I, I made the hole. So that's fine. I'm still burying it up to the point that I said. So just hold it there. Fill it, fill the soil in. Eventually I'll mulch this bed, but for now I don't have any mulch, so I'm not going to. But I will mulch it, and I will do a whole video about mulch and the importance of mulch. But for now, this is it. So this is how this is how it will look. Kind of looks like a little baby compared to how it did earlier, because how I buried it is so low. But it will take off in no time. Just top it off, watering it off. I'm sorry. Just water it down, water it in, make sure it has good contact. And then here's the trellis. And you can see this trellis better if I stand like this. Um, so this these tomatoes will grow. And as the trellis, as the tomatoes grow, I'll show you how I maintain them against and on the trellis, keep them aerated, help them stand sturdy and strong. And we will keep you updated, of course, on how, how they do in the progress of that. I have four more to do uh, on in this raised bed with this trellis, which is, I think, maximizing the capacity of this bed, apart from companion planting some herbs and other great things parsley, chives, onions, leeks, marigolds, nasturtiums, basil. Uh, there's tons of variety. There's tons of companion plants that can be fit into here. Um, and there's no limit. You're not going to overcrowd your tomato plants with herbs. Um, if anything, they will work together to help each other do the best they can do. I hope you can hear me. There's this is a community garden and it is located in the heart of a community that went through a recent gentrification. Um, it's so recent that there's a mix of, <laughs> of a demographic of people. The garden is brand new. Behind me, you can see people um, at the park gathered and playing at the playground. Kids all over. Um, I'm happy to be part of this. And I'm also excited to share with you the sunset and the mountains. Let's see if we can catch it. There it is. That's it for now. I hope you learned something new. Try it this season. Thanks for stopping by. As always, like, share, comment, subscribe.